The markets are teetering and we need to talk about it along with the expected NVIDIA earnings after market close today. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and when I initially asked my father-in-law for his blessing to marry my now wife, he initially said no. And I said to him, well, then we'll just run away to get married. He said, you can't elope. I said, you watermelon. We're going to take a look at SPY, QQQ, Tesla, got to do an update on that, and of course, importantly, NVIDIA, and I'll share with you some of the things that I have forecast for them coming up. We'll see just how close they pan out in the after hours today, and then I'll also tell you later on in this video about where you can see my buys and sells, about my options course, and about how you can learn to do technical analysis to up your trading game. In the meantime, today, for the markets, FOMC minutes coming out at 2 p.m., the market could most definitely see some downward pressure leading up to that time. We might already be seeing some of it now, along with NVIDIA, I think is also being the last of the Magnificent Seven to report their earnings. There's a lot of pressure and pretense on that one. I think the signal from NVIDIA is going to be the signal from the market. So we need to be watching for that. I talked about it in my previous video, and it's most definitely something that I'm aware of and watching for here. And I will give a technical analysis view of that as well. By the way, quick shout out to my wife. She's a very, very large supporter of the things that I do when I couldn't do what I do without her. And I'm going to take this moment to look her in the eyes and say, happy birthday, baby. I love you. And don't ever underestimate just how embarrassed she is by that moment. So let's move right along into the charts themselves. So uh, let me bring down that and put up this. And what we're looking at right now is Tesla. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's back it up to the SPY for a moment. I've been talking about this rising wedge pattern for a while now, updating the chart as we move along. I think that this is a really good view. I also mentioned about the beginnings of some bearish divergence. And we also had a little bit of a sell-off to open up the week yesterday. So for SPY, let me expand that and we'll zoom in to see a little bit more of what's going on. You can see right now that we tested out the bottom of that trend line and we had a significant bounce. This green line is the five period moving average. The yellow is the 13 and the two are kind of narrowing on each other. We're actually in between them right now. You'll notice that when we're in a bullish movement that we ride on top of the moving average and when we're into the bearish movements that you can see too many of them here, but we actually start to dangle off the moving averages. So right now we're kind of dangling off the five, but we're riding the 13. So not quite a signal that we moved into sell, but there could be some upside left in this. So keep that in mind. So for this one, should we break down through this bottom trend line that could signal a further drop from here? And that takes us over to QQQ. Same formation as we uh, take a look at this. However, there's one important difference. And let me zoom in for you. On this rising wedge pattern, you get a nice big fat view with that candle there for you. You can see we actually did drop down through that lower trend line. It's possible that in the queues that we return back down to about 416 from where we're at right now, and that's a pretty significant drop. Now, mind you, I think NVIDIA earnings are going to be that telltale sign of which direction we go. The Fed minutes are also going to be something that could act as a catalyst for us to move us in either direction. We're going to have to look and see if it means even fewer rate hikes than we, I, I'm sorry, rate cuts than we expected. Um, and then people are tossing out the non-zero chance of a, I think I heard on CNBC or something like that. Is there a, is there a non-zero chance for a rate hike? And they're in, they kind of dance around the whole non-zero thing. Um, but I, I still, I'm still in accordance with a lot of people out there. I don't think that there's any rate hikes coming our way unless we see significant reignition of inflation that we start turning around the other way. And January is just not enough for that. So right now it's thought that January could be a one-off. The February numbers are going to be critical for us, especially because that leads up to the FOMC meeting that we have March 19th and 20th coming up next month, which by the way, March isn't that far away. I think it's Friday of next week we finally start tiptoeing into March. So um, I live in Pennsylvania. It's pretty cold. I'm looking forward to the warmer days and hopefully March is uh, a month that brings that to us. Let's move over to Tesla. So for Tesla, what I think is very worthwhile to watch for Tesla, this is the weekly chart that we're looking at here. It's possible that we're seeing a bearish flag or a bearish pennant formation come out right here. And the critical thing for us to watch is a few different things that are out there. One, we're at the five period, so this is the five week moving average here. We'll see if we continue to get rejected there. We also need to watch out for the RSI for the momentum that we have right now. If it continues to climb, we might be okay for a little while longer. From where we're at right now in the pre-market, it's about 192. And what we're gonna have to see if we continue to climb off this nearly oversold territory that we got on the weekly chart. Let's go down to the daily chart to see the more recent price action. And what you'll see is that we just barely crossed the 50 these last uh, two days, so Thursday, Friday, we barely crossed the 50, and then yesterday with the sell-off that we got, 
In the market itself, Tesla not being immune to that, we also find ourselves back under 50 on the RSI, which means back into bearish territory, but we're dancing around that line. So another down day today could show us momentum that we have further downside on this one. I was talking about an inverse head and shoulders pattern on this as we look at the chart, and we did pop on that day. I did take advantage of the options. Actually, I stopped out a little bit early on that. Uh, I believe that the people who are in my Patreon group a lot of them did a lot better than I did, which kudos to them. That was uh, that was incredible. I'm glad that I could point out the uh, the movement for Tesla that we had for that. Now, mind you, we're back under 200. So right now, the question is: Is Tesla trading as a, a $200 stock, or is it doubtful that it's a $200 plus dollar stock? So right now. If that's in doubt, 200 is going to act as significant resistance for us to the upside. So even if we go back up and retest that 200, that's going to be that telltale sign of if we have that further upside. So from here, revisit 200, cross back over 50 on the RSI. We need to watch 200 $200 per share for Tesla. If we get rejected there, I think it's going to be significantly down from that point. So we're going to have to watch for that, watch and see what happens. So we do still have room, by the way, up to about 206, 207 before we hit resistance. We hit about 206, uh, but going back to, I believe it was Friday in the pre-market hours, it was just shy of 206 that we hit as a high on that. So you don't really see that in the daily chart. If I actually go to the hourly chart, that's something that you will see. So we actually made it up to looks like 205.30, 205.50, somewhere around in there as we hit these higher candles that are in here. 205.40 was that high price uh, and then sold off from there. So now we have to watch and see what's getting set up for us for Tesla. And we, again, on the hourly chart, we still have that rising momentum. We're going to have to watch and see. It is possible that if the market does move up again uh, following the NVIDIA earnings, that Tesla also takes some of that ride as well. Now, mind you, if NVIDIA starts to tank, the market starts looking for value some of the smaller cap stocks that we have, such as IWM, Russell 2000, which especially in light of sooner coming rate cuts. So the closer we get to that, the more we could see a rally coming out in those small caps. IWM is that ETF that tracks it. So the thing to watch for Tesla, just to be clear, is the weekly and the daily RSI. And we want to be watching for those to climb up out of the hole that it's currently in. I do believe that it is a $200 plus dollar stock. I do think that we're going to return to that. I do think that it could take a little bit of pain in order to get there. But I do think that it is a good time for me to do dollar cost averaging. So that's what I've been doing. And should I see other options, opportunities come along for Tesla, I will play those as well. All right. So with that said, let me just put this up real quick. So if you guys want to see my buys and sells and what I do with this market, you can do so over at the Patreon. There's a Discord available in that Patreon. In that Discord is where I post those buys and sells. I also have my options course available in the Patreon as well. So by being a member, you can also get access to that. And then I also have my Tesla and NVIDIA stock price prediction and earnings projection available available at the Patreon. So if you want to know ahead of time for Tesla, for NVIDIA, what I see coming for them, that is the place that you can go. And if you learn to do technical analysis like I do and benefit the markets like I do, you can do so using the link down in the description for the technical analysis trading course. It's a, it's a great place to be, wonderful community that's over there and also very clean, concise lessons over there on technical analysis and how to trade the markets. All right. So I'm going to put up the chart that we have for NVIDIA. And so uh, we'll talk about the chart for NVIDIA. I'll also tell you about the predictions that I have for NVIDIA and provide some commentary on what we could see following those earnings that we get in the after hours today. So uh, I'll put up the chart first and then we'll get over to uh, my expectations for NVIDIA and, uh, and what I see for those earnings. So here we go. This is the hourly chart that we're looking at for NVIDIA. And I think that's a really good view for what we have with the Fibonacci retracement because you can see yesterday so the, the Fibonacci level that I have is 677, almost 678. And yesterday, our low price is about 677. And so we're currently riding that line. Now, leading up to those earnings, what would make me bullish on earnings as more of a certainty? It would actually be the next Fib level down at about 635, 636 that I talked about in my previous videos. Should we pull down to that prior to earnings? I think there's a really significant chance for a positive bounce for NVIDIA stock price given their earnings as I am bullish on their earnings, I'm bullish on NVIDIA, and I have my stock prediction and earnings projection available, like I said, over at the Patreon, you can go and you can check that out. So I do think that we could get that bounce, should we pull all the way down now, and I, I get it that that's, that's a pretty far fall, that'd be another 5% day for NVIDIA. I think we're actually right now being off the peak and also off this FIB down here, we're setting up right where earnings sets us up. As a matter of fact, I think today we could possibly 
possibly we're going to have to look and see, see if we get a push back up to that 700 level or if we hang right around that 675, 677 level. Uh, we're going to have to watch and see, but it, it will be a cliffhanger ending, in my opinion, to NVIDIA's stock price going into earnings. And the lower that we go into earnings, the easier it is to be bullish. So that's the sort of idea that I have going into this. I think that there could be a sell following those earnings as we've seen it previously. So we already had that strength and that anticipation go into it. We know that currently about 750-ish is about where we're finding that top. Matter of fact, 747, I think, is about where we peaked out, just shy of that before. So following those earnings, unless we hear something incredible. Now, mind you, I think that we would have to we'd have to change the, the growth curve that they're on, I think, in order to see immediate bullishness come out of this. So they would have to come out and talk about a, a further uh, speed change or, a, or an acceleration change that we would have uh, going into the next several earnings or even to the next earnings or even their, their, their full year's outlook for their fiscal year 2025. This is their fiscal year 2024 that they're reporting on today. So it's always one year ahead of where we're currently at for their fiscal calendar year. So they, they ended their period in January 2024. So that ends fiscal year 2024 for them. So January 2025 will be their fiscal year 2025 earnings that they report on. So that's how I want to phrase that, how I want to talk about it. So what am I looking at EPS wise for this? Well, for EPS, I have them coming in at about 457 per share. We're going to have to see if we get that. That means about for the fiscal year 2024, $12.20 is what I have them coming at for that year. And then going into next year, that we could actually see over $20 per share coming out of NVIDIA. Now, the uh, the price prediction itself, this is kind of a nuanced thing as we talk about price predictions. And I realize I'm looking at things off camera that you don't necessarily have here. But for price predictions themselves, something I talk about in my videos when I put these out on the Patreon for my stock price predictions and earnings projections, is that a company like NVIDIA is most definitely going to trade with the market multiples that are out there. And the market multiples right now are somewhat high. They're not the highest they've been, but they're still somewhat high. And I think we're seeing a lot of that forward growth being priced into NVIDIA as well, along with the fact that the, the Magnificent 7 stocks uh, minus Tesla have, uh, have been very rampant recently. So those multiples are up there right now that we still need to see that forward growth still happening as the quarters go by to make the price predictions happen. So I am bullish on NVIDIA. I don't know that we see that bullishness come out of earnings. I think that we could see a further drop on those earnings unless they really blow things out of the water. So we're going to have to watch and see. Things that can cause them to blow it out of the water, by the way, would be continued margin expansion, uh, gross margin, and then, of course, the, uh, the net margin that we see uh, for their profit. So uh, if we continue to see that demand, which is what we want to hear about, that there's further demand for their H200s that are coming out, uh, for the Blackwell chips that are coming out after that, um, that they just keep on building up their, their partnerships, that they keep on seeing, uh, like I said, demand for their products, further infrastructure builds, uh, that they give us guidance that is something that's just going to be absolutely insane compared to what we hear, then that could cause a pop on earnings. Otherwise, I think that a lot of the, uh, the positivity and a lot of the excitement has been priced in. And that's why we've seen the rise that we have over the past month and a half-ish of, uh, of this run for NVIDIA. I think that, like I said, the market being forward-looking like it is has caused that to happen. I think that from right now, I don't think we see anything over that 746 unless we hear something that is astoundingly beyond uh, where it's already anticipated to be. So it's already priced in for an earnings and an earnings beat. So I, I, meeting those uh, those projected earnings, the guidance that we had from NVIDIA is going to be important. And they've beat by, I think, a, a significant amount every quarter for the past several quarters. So that's a lot to keep in mind is that they under promise and they're going to overperform. As we look at that, the market does know that. So the market knowing that is also going to price it in ahead of time. I think we're seeing that pricing. So I just wanted to be clear on that one. But I do think that as we start to pull back on this last thing that I want to share with you, and I want to go back out to the daily chart on this because it's going to be important. By the way, look at that zoomed out view. That's going parabolic if I've ever seen it. But we also have a company that's also putting out performance. Now, mind you, again, forward looking on this. But that 50 day, which currently right now is at about $600. I think that's the line in the sand that we have. I'll even put a, uh, a horizontal line out here for you at about that $600 mark. So all the way down here, 
that's that line in the sand price that we have that even in market weakness that I think now we've gone on from being a $500 plus dollar stock as I've talked about for their previous earnings. I think we've moved on to being a $600 plus dollar stock. So that means should we break that line in the sand? Should we cross down below that 600 coming up in the future that that starts to set up buying opportunities for NVIDIA and, uh, and that we start to see those days that actually bring the bargain back to it and so we're just going to have to watch and see, waiting for that pullback to happen, waiting to uh, to spring into uh, into action uh, on that next movement down from NVIDIA. It makes it difficult to buy when it's up at the top like it is. So I don't know if it is an overall top. We're going to have to wait and see for that. So let me summarize here for the markets themselves. We're going to have to watch to see previous highs being broken to see further bullishness. NVIDIA is something that it can most definitely help that, especially where the cues are involved, bring us back into that formation that we have, let us ride up a little while longer. The Fed is gonna be a hindrance for us for a little while. I do think that the small caps, when we start to near those rate cuts, when some of this uh, doubt is finally moving out of the way, I think the small caps are gonna outperform what we have in the NASDAQ and in the S&P. We're gonna have to wait for that time to come along. I think that that's where the value is right now. And, um, and like I said, we're just gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to watch and we're gonna see what comes out of that. Thank you guys for watching. Check out the link in the description for the Patreon. Come over and join me and my community, see my buys and sells. Check out the link for that technical analysis trading course. As always, thank you so much. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember my friends that learning is earning and we'll see you in the next video.